Chances are that you've been to the vet a few times, maybe more, with your dog or cat. And you may have noticed that lots of different ailments like diarrhea, ear infections, itchy skin, allergies, seem to get pretty similar treatments. Antibiotics, maybe some anti-nausea, pain meds, and sometimes steroids. Immune suppressors are also often given for chronic itchy skin. Apoquil. <clears throat> <laughs> there is a crisis in veterinary medicine in the United States. Opioids and antibiotics are heavily overprescribed. Some prescriptions have been proven ineffective and are still prescribed. If you've ever been given a drug for your pet just in case or given a drug and found yourself going back saying that's not working, you're not alone. Angela Ardolino joins me today to discuss a topic that is so important every pet parent needs to hear it. There is a better way. We have medicine that helps without side effects. It helps every animal because it's all natural and works with the body as nature intended. She has gathered an all-star panel of veterinarians for the Do No Harm online event that you don't wanna miss. Join me today as I get the scoop on CBD from the original pet medical cannabis expert. Angela has so much love for all animals and credentials, you wouldn't believe, and she's on a mission to help you heal your pets naturally. You're not going to want to miss one second of today's episode. She's laying it all out for you in a way that's easy to understand, and she gives you practical tips for what to do next. So without further ado, here's Angela. <coughs> Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. I'm just so excited to have you on the show today because, Thank you for having me. first of all, most of what I know about CBD, which is very, very little, I've learned from you. Ah, good. <laughs> and I am a big, like anybody ever asks me about CBD, I'm like, CBD dog health. Like that's the only answer I ever have. And Thank um, you. I know there are others out there and we'll, and, and we're also going to talk about your event, which is super exciting. So if you're listening, make sure you stay tuned till the end, because we're going to be talking about this event for, it's going to be September 22nd. So coming up really, really soon, but you're yeah. not going to want to miss it. So uh, Angela is going to talk about that, but can you give me like a CBD for dummies? Like just a rundown? <laughs> Yes. It, I feel like it's one of the most complicated things because CBD is just one compound found in the cannabis plant. So I'm going to back up to what the cannabis plant is so that everybody understands. But the cannabis plant, what we know of is either marijuana or hemp. So the main two compounds in marijuana and hemp that make it so powerful are CBD and THC. And we all have heard about them and we know about them. We know that THC makes us high. And so everybody's all scared about THC. If the plant, the cannabis plant has more THC, it therefore has less CBD. And if it has, and it's called marijuana, which is a made up name, but that's what yeah. the United <laughs> States is going to call it. And if it has more CBD, it therefore has less THC and it's called hemp. Dogs. Okay have in particular, and we've only had this research on dogs, dogs have more receptors than any of us, any other animal that we have found. So dogs react to hemp so well. So we could do a lot with a little bit of um, CBD. The reason it's called CBD is because that's the one we know that doesn't make you high and has all the beneficial, um, all the benefits that we know about. But what is done in research is a full spectrum product, which means it has not only the CBD, but the THC, and then all of the other cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, proteins, fatty acids, omegas that come in that plant. 
Um, so that's what full spectrum means. And for whatever reason, we've just started calling it CBD instead. And that's just one compound. CBD actually by itself, um, I'm sure has will in the future, will know medical uses. Let's say uh, twitching eye, you take CBD isolate all by itself and it stops the twitch. But now, as far as what, we're, what we know and what we're using, it has to be a full spectrum meaning it has to have all of those other cannabinoids in it. You don't want a broad spectrum where it removes the THC. That's another process that you've put it through and it's not as powerful. And that is not what the research is based on or an isolate, meaning they just pull certain cannabinoids out, like you're going to see CBG and uh, CBDA and all of these other cannabinoids and, and how they're going to start going, hey, this is the new great thing and you want to make sure you have this. All of those exist already in the cannabis flower, in the hemp flower. You just have to take, extract all of those compounds out of the flower and basically put them in a bottle make them small enough so that they can be absorbed and put them in a bottle with a carrier oil that also helps them get absorbed and you're it, you're done. Um, a lot of the products out on the market aren't really strong enough because it's kind of an expensive plant. So um, I would never do anything less than a 500 milligram bottle where you're getting at least five to 10 milligrams in one dropper. And, um, and that's when you know you're dealing with a good medicine. Okay. So that makes sense to me. Like when I think about what are the healthiest things, I think about how does it exist in nature? Because that's how it's supposed to, like, that's how we're supposed to use it. If it, yeah. if we were supposed to use it in a different way, it would exist differently. And it, like my very simple brain, that's how I think. <laughs> that's exactly how I think is <laughs> Every time I hear about um, a pharmaceutical drug or someone said, like, for instance, I was start, I, the reason I found cannabis is because I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and they prescribed me Humira. So when I went down that rabbit hole of researching that drug and saw all the side effects and that's linked to lymphoma, I'm like, heck no, I'm not going to take this. I'm an, I do everything else natural. Let me go find what anti-inflammatories exist in nature. And that's how I found it. And I tr happened to try it and could not believe how quickly um, my arthritic pain was gone. And then my, my um, mood was so much better. My stress and anxiety levels were going down. I'm like, how the heck is this being kept from us? And then, right. I don't know if you know this part, but um, I became obsessed with it. I sold my business and threw myself into the medical cannabis industry and got invited to the University of Vermont School of Medicine to go through their um, program in the study of cannabis for its therapeutic uses. And that's when I learned animals have the same system as we did. And that's when I knew that's where I wanted, that's what I wanted to specialize in. So that was back in 2015. Um, when I went to look for a product for animals, there wasn't anything. So uh, I took my knowledge of what I learned um, in school and partnered with a Ayurvedic chemist who we took other adaptogens and combined them and created these tinctures. And then I literally had two years that I tried them out on my rescue farm. I have uh, farm animals and old senior geriatric, usually sick dogs, dogs with problems and tried them and used them on them for two years before I even was able to release them in 2018 because of the farm bill. Farm bill allowed it, made it legal in all 50 states, and that's when we could release our, release our product. So, you know, I've been doing this now for six years, you know, so when people are like, it doesn't work, I'm like, what are you using? Because I've been able to do, um, and I'm not a vet. I, I specialize in cannabis and now in mushrooms. Um, I'm the one that teaches vets and doctors about cannabis and the endocannabinoid system because they don't get taught it at school. However, just got off a podcast with Dr. Adam Christman, who said there are schools who are now um, teaching them about the endocannabinoid system. So that made my day. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And Dr. Adam is pretty awesome, too. I got to kind of meet him at Super Zoo. And, yeah, he's um, awesome. That, that is so awesome to, to hear that they're starting to incorporate it because I, I don't, 
I don't know. I'm obviously you would know better than me. I don't know if that niche is super saturated, but I know it's not like super regulated, right? So there's a lot not regulated out there. at all. Right. Yeah. It, well, there's a lot out there that at, at the well, average. You know the dog food industry <laughs> is not regulated, and how, who it's regulated by is it's so corrupt. So, you know, I don't mean to jump ahead, but one of the reasons we're doing this event um, is because uh, you know there's I think we have five vets that are on the panel, and many of them have been practicing for over twenty years. So they're watching these trends. They're watching where there used to be no pain meds given out of the clinic setting, meaning sent home, to things that aren't even approved for uses in dogs, to drugs that didn't make it or got a bad rap in the human side of things and now are suddenly approved for something in dogs. So like gabapentin is one of them. you know, Josie's, you know, it does, there's no proof that it works on anything, both in humans or in dogs, yet it's an FDA approved drug for pain for dogs. And there's no proof whatsoever. Yet I have to hear people say to me all the time, where's the proof, where's the proof, where's the research? The research is there. What do you think they do the research on for humans? They do it on animals. So it's already been proven. I don't, we have a whole page both on my site and CD Dog Health is just all the research that's out there. I, I, there's no denying it anymore. Why don't they ask that about pharmaceuticals? We ask that we don't ask that about pharmaceuticals because we assume that if a doctor is prescribing it, then it must be safe, it must be effective. Nope. It's someone, you know, my favorite thing to say is have you seen the, the series Dope Sick? I, was it on Amazon? I can't remember Netflix. I know. I can't remember either. It was either Amazon or, or Hulu. And first of all, I'm just going to interject that um, Michael Keaton, love, love, love I him as too. an actor. And I'm just, this is an ongoing thing. So every time this comes up, I have to mention that he was the best Batman. So go on. <laughs> he was. Well, he was the best Batman, but I love when Christian Bale did the Batman Returns. Like, him. They all have no. good point. I but mean, like right. Mal Kilmer and George, <laughs> Kilmer, like they're all, let me, they have their yeah. own things. So, <laughs> Michael Keaton. And then I would have to say Christian Bales is a close second. Nobody else comes close, but you're right. No. And those people who haven't seen it, I think it's a, a real eye opener for people who don't understand how it works. And that's in the human side of things where no. Pharmaceutical companies have reps that come in and sell them and say, yes, we did research. It's not addictive. Yes, we did research and it's completely safe. And those are complete lies. And the doctors believe it and prescribe it. What, how do you think prescription, all these prescription diets and Hill Science and Royal King and all those that you see in a conventional vet office? Well, a vet isn't taught about diet and nutrition. So they came in and go, great, you got a dog with kidney problems? We made this diet that's based on science of what a dog with kidney, and it's not. So the same thing happens in pharmaceutical drugs and treatments, um, just, just like chemotherapy, radiation, all of those things. I really feel, and I, this is like just how I had this feeling, And then when I have five or six holistic or integrated veterinarians going, yeah, you're right. It is messed up. It isn't work. They're taught, I don't know if you know about my Doberman Nina with osteosarcoma, you know, diagnosis, gonna, uh, she only has four to six months to live and that's with radiation, chemotherapy and amputation. I didn't do any of those things. And I, she was with me for 26 months and unheard of. And I, had, mm-hmm. I, I showed her because nobody believed me. So I put her in front of as many vets as I possibly could have to show them. I had to go get um, pathology done when I finally did amputate her leg to prove that it was osteosarcoma because vets didn't believe that she was still alive, still running around, that they were seeing her like this. So that was another thing. The, the vet who, um, the holistic vet who actually helped me uh, put her down when it was time said, you understand that we're taught, the first thing we're taught to do is to amputate the leg. And that, yeah. 
destroys their immune system. Anesthesia destroys it, the stress of um, the surgery. And if you've already got a dog, she's already senior citizen and she's battling cancer. So all of those things make a big impact. So I lost her six, wait, four months after amputating her leg. So 24 months, she made it and still had her leg and tumor leg and everything. So we don't even get that option. Nobody even tells us about that. And we're spending like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to do it. And it's, mm-hmm. it makes no sense to me. And, I, and that it's happening over and over again. And I mean, I have pieces of research of uh, questioning whether it's even ethical to give a dog chemotherapy. They consider chemotherapy palliative care. What? How is putting poison in your body? Pal- a dog can't say, I'm hurting, I feel bad right now, I feel really sick, I feel like I'm going to die. They can't say or do any of those things. So, you know, I just think it's this this trend of not only over prescribing, but prescribing drugs that don't even work for what they are. So, you know, Dr. Bugh is seeing 16 year old dogs on methadone. And then she has to detox a 16 year old dog off these harsh drugs, or they're giving, given a gabapentin for pain doesn't work. Do you think they replace it? No. They give them another one on top of the gabapentin. And the excuse is, well, this drug deals with this pain pathway. This one deals with this pain pathway. Same thing with cancer. This drug deals with this cancer pathway. This one deals with this cancer pathway. Guess what? Cannabis, medicinal mushrooms, turmeric, green tea. Guess what they do? They deal with all of the pathways. All of them. But imagine... If I go up to a plant and it does all these amazing things naturally, I, the big pharmaceutical greedy company, can't take this plant and make billions off of it because it grows like a weed. (laughs) (laughs) What I can do is I can take one compound out of it and then go make a drug out of it, patent it, and make millions and millions of dollars. That is what's happening in this world. It happens in the human side. And why it happens even more in the pet side is because it's so less regulated. Nobody cares. If I'm that big, mean pharmaceutical guy and I took out a compound and I made a drug and I killed your dog, it's considered property. The only way you can sue me and the judge is going to say, well, how much were your vet bills? That's it. What's happening now is that parent, pet parents are getting together and we're doing class action suits against these big companies. But they're so big, it's just like, okay, take it off the market, okay, settlement, move on, let's change the name type of thing. So we just, there's too many people who are, too many pets who are suffering and too many pet parents who are suffering who, I was that person, I lost my first dog after doing everything my conventional vet did. I fed her the Purina Pro Plan, I vaccinated her every year for everything. I gave her the flea and tick meds. I did it all. And I lost her at seven years old. They couldn't tell me why. I stopped counting at $15,000. So this is where my, where I started. (laughs) And I was never going to let that happen again. And I never considered, never thought, it wasn't like I blamed my conventional vet. It just was, that's what they're taught. That's what they know. You go in, and I went in for diarrhea and throwing up. I, I, and I don't judge anybody who still goes to the vet. Now I'm like, don't go. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you go to the wrong vet and you get a antibiotic for that diarrhea, uh, which I don't even, uh, flagell, metro Yeah, metro Yeah. It literally destroys their gut microbiome, which is where mm-hmm. their immune system lives. So, mm-hmm. and then they give you a, what is it, Florida, Flora. Some will give you that makes it even worse, causes leaky gut. So literally, like, just going to the vet for problems with diarrhea could send everything down. And I really think that's what happened to my my dog, my first dog. Never yeah, I, again. <laughs> yeah, right. I think this is a really exciting time that we're living in because so many people are waking up 
to the fact that it's all about the money. It's in the U. I I mean, it, you know, in other countries as well, but I think us here in the U.S. No, I think it's just the United States and maybe one other country that allows pharmaceutical companies to advertise to us. Why are right. they advertising to us? It, yeah, right. So that we it go is. in and tell our doctors, I want we this want drug. Pill. They say, go ask your drug about Humira. Yeah. And then they go, yeah. Well, so many people are asking about it. Maybe we should carry it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it should be. Maybe it's good. I don't know, but they don't, it's, that's all it's based on. Yeah. And even when you do like, so I, I did study, uh, psychology. So I went through all of the science courses and statistics and learning how to run, um, uh, run studies and all of the things. So while I didn't pursue that, I was actually just talking to Carol from Mind Pet Platter the other day at Super Zoo. And I was like, I didn't pursue that because I, by the time I got out of, you know, undergrad, I was like, I don't want to listen to people complain all day. And like, so I just <laughs> kind of ditched it. <laughs> but, you know, just having that knowledge base and understanding how studies are run, how they're funded, how they're conducted, how, you know, if, if data doesn't fit in what you want that study to, um, decide, you know, how, how the data is going to show whatever you're studying, you can just, Oh, you know, that's an outlier or, right. you know, whatever. And, and toss it. Out. And it's, it, it blows my mind how we put so much stock in where's the study. Like you were saying, where's the study on this? Where's the study on that? Well, but they don't ask okay. that for the pharmaceutical drug. Yeah. Right. And it, First, first of all, we can find studies on a lot of things these days, but you're going to find studies on both sides. It, it, it's not about the study. And a, a lot of people say, oh, you know, you can't do anything off of all this anecdotal evidence. But that's where science starts. And that's what, right? That, well, at least that's what the integrative and holistic vets look at. Yeah. Go, hey, I, so... Like for me and for CBD, it was like, we have proven that it's safe for dogs. Great. Did that. Now let's move on. So now we know it's safe. Now let's try it for all the things that it's, they, they said it would work for. So if a vet or an integrative starts doing that, they're going to see very fast that it works and it's great and it makes sense. So absolutely, and it will make sense. Absolutely. All in the presentation is... This is who I am. This is why this works. This is why this is a better alternative. And here's five cases, five cases. Um, going back to the, the research part of it, just my little cancer part. So it was funny because I was like, okay, I got um, 850 days with Nina after her diagnosis. Most dogs are dead four to six months. So I look at all that research. And I want to say, let's see what that what the lifespan is for dogs, radiation, chemotherapy, and then the combination of both. So I know I have it here, but I think I have it. I'm going to mess up the numbers a little bit, but so I'm reading it and the research says uh, radiation. If you were to do, I'm sorry, amputation, if you were to do amputation, you're going to get a hundred more days. If you only do amputation, if you do amputation and radiation, you're going to get 200 days. If you do amputation, radiation, and chemotherapy, you're going to get 300 days. But that's actually, I, I actually started to question myself and go, wow, that's not so bad. And then I read in small writing. <laughs> I have to look it up. Uh, of the amount of dogs that started, and I can't remember the number of dogs, but those statistics were taken from the only 12 dogs that survived. So I think they started with like 72. So all that, I'm thinking 72 dogs, this is what they got. So even with everything, 305 days, I think was what you did all three. And that was only 12 of the original 70 dogs that survived that did that. Do you see how yeah. skewed and screwed up that is? When yeah. Nina, I didn't do any of those things. I got 850 days. I just want to make a t-shirt that says 850 days. And people go, what? Tell me about my What's What is that? Yeah. Because I couldn't believe that it was only 12 dogs at the end. 
Yeah, and I think another really important factor that people don't consider when they're like reading, if they do even pull studies, which I think most people that are like, where's the studies on that? Don't even look or read at, read them or look, look them up. But um, is the quality of life in those animals. So, exactly. you know, okay, we're, we're amputating, we're amputating and doing radiation or chemotherapy. But of those 100, 200, 300 days, what is the quality of life? I am so glad animal? you're saying that. Exactly. They're being tortured. They're in pain. They're not enjoying themselves. And then my saying is there, if I had, I, I, I probably would never have to, but if I were somebody else, if it was me 10 years ago and I had a young dog, I would probably amputate not knowing better, but I think I'd always be weary of chemotherapy and radiation because it's, it's not like there's a, the, the whole uh, oncologist for the veterinary field is a new thing. It's completely new. So this is a new field. And you go, you have to ask yourself, well, why does it exist exactly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's veterinarians who go, I'm going to become an oncologist and I'm going to do, make a difference. Um, you know, one of my favorite oncologists is Dr. Trina Hazah. Um, she was using cannabis and THC at the DCA in Los Angeles way before anybody else was. And she learned, she, she went from being the, the most obnoxious amounts of chemotherapy to kill that cancer to she does, she treats them with cannabis first before she considers anything else. That's amazing. So that's her using the medicine and not looking at research and whatever, and her using it in practice, knowing it's safe, you have nothing to lose. Um, so she is now, doesn't work for the BCA, but is com completely on her own. Or Dr. Kendra Pope, who is like a integrative oncologist. And I know there's a few others. Um, I think there's like two or three that I have found that are incredible. But for the most part, it is brand new. So it's like this new thing where you have to go, we're using human chemotherapy on dogs. Has anybody adapted it, made sure it's what it's supposed to do? And I think there's nothing worse than having your dog suffer for several months and then ended up losing them and being broke at the end also. Yeah. It's all about quality of life. It's the biggest reason I started CBD Dog Health is the power to get rid of pain, stress, and anxiety with a dropper full of something that's all natural and has no side effects. <gasps> I feel so right. powerful. I literally, my neighbors call me, my donkey's gone down. I grab a bottle of heel, I'm running out. I, you know, <laughs> somebody gets in a fight, I'm running out with my heel. Um, so I think it's just, it's a wonderful thing. It gives us so much power knowing that I can help my pet and then I can deal with whatever need I need ne to do next without causing any harm to them permanently. So I know you've talked a little bit about, you know, full spectrum versus like broad spectrum. And I don't want to muddy what we know about this so far <laughs> because I, I kind of want to keep things simple. Um, not just for the listeners, but for me. <laughs> um, we've talked about so many things of, you know, the benefits and, you know, the example with, with Nina you did mention something about the research being done on dogs, but I know you have products for cats too. So do you, what, what are you seeing with cat patients? Because I think being bipetual, I guess is the best <laughs> word for it. And you got to put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I... I, and, and talking to so many different people and because I put content out for both dog and cat parents, I do see different mindsets, I guess, of pet parents oh, that totally. have dogs versus cats. So what are you seeing with cats in, in so, the CBD? Oh, so cats, um, a cat, I don't have as much experience with cats, which is why I'm best friends with two crazy cat ladies. Yeah. Um, and they have been so helpful, but because they show pain so differently, meaning they don't show it at all, or anxiety or stress so differently, um, but they respond just as well. They're not as sensitive to it as dogs are, 
Um, it's more difficult to get it into their mouth most of the time. But the good thing is that their paw pads are super absorbent, so you can rub it inside their paw pads. But, you know, if you, everything that it works on for a dog, it works on for a cat. And, you know, it's easier to give a dog with arthritis, you know, a dropper full and an hour later he's doing things he didn't do before. Cats are, one of my favorite stories was with um, Jay and Adrian's cat and he wouldn't, he wasn't coming down from da upstairs. He wasn't coming out from under the bed. Um, so they knew it was working because he was downstairs interacting with them and everybody else. And he hadn't done that in forever. So it's, you know, your pet best and will be able to say, yes, I can tell my cat's happier or more comfortable or doing what he used to do. But yes, cats, it is amazing. Horses, any, every animal has an endocannabinoid system. So every animal benefits from cannabis, all of them. We're all okay. born with it. We can... We can be born with an endocannabinoid deficiency. One of the first times we get some of our endocannabinoids are from our mother's breast milk. It actually gives us the uh, thrive, the, what is it called? The, I forgot what the term is called. It makes you want to thrive and suckle. Uh, a cannabinoid okay. is, is an endocannabinoid, which means ones that we produce inside our body. So if we have oh. a deficiency, which we could have at birth, we have this plant that makes phytocannabinoids that we can take and it fills those deficiencies. So the endocannabinoid system is responsible for all of the other systems in our body. It is responsible for keeping us in homeostasis. So if you have a deficiency and you don't fix it one way or another, you'll suffer for a long time. So one of the most beautiful things is, I know you've heard about fibromyalgia, which I'm sure mm -hmm. exists in animals also, but they don't know what it is. They don't know what causes it. Some, some people think that it's a psychological thing, but if a person is feeling pain, they are feeling pain. What I think fibromyalgia is, is a extreme deficiency in their endocannabinoid system, where you're literally having phantom faint pain all over and in weird places and can't figure it out. So I think that all these things that doctors don't know how to treat, you know, I'm literally right here working on our presentations for the Do No Harm event where we're like, okay, steroids, what do they do? Why do we use them? They have a place, but they're not supposed to be used long term. You're oh, no, a, for a sure. Much sicker animal, but people use drugs like Apoquil on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and all it does is suppress their immune system so that they're not having the reaction instead of dealing with that, with whatever that issue is. And trust me, I've got old dogs that are itching like crazy and they get, they get a lot of CBD, but I can't imagine giving them something, an old dog, something that's going to suppress their immune system and leave them open to get something else and not yeah. have their immune system do their job. <laughs> I know it's crazy that we intentionally suppress. I mean, yeah, it, it's crazy to me that we intentionally suppress immune systems. But so you mentioned the Do No Harm event, and I want to talk about that. But really quickly, I want to play devil's advocate here for just a moment, if you'll let me. Um, have you ever had an animal that just didn't like the way they – CBD? Like, I, I don't – I don't want to get too woo-woo here, though I can get very woo-woo. Um, one of my cats, I have tried different CBDs with her, and an animal communicator and a muscle tester have both told me she doesn't like the way she feels when I give it to her. I know that sounds crazy. I'm no, just playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> I, no, and I love that you're saying this. So I want, I love that I'm, you know, both – both into cannabis and mushrooms because mushrooms, it's easy because there's all these different species of mushrooms and we all know about them. Oh, lion's mane is good for the brain. Turkey tail, great for cancer. And cannabis, we just know it as cannabis. Well, guess what? Cannabis has all different strains also. So I will often say, um, if especially if I'm dealing with a dog with cancer, um, an aggressive cancer, if another dog, I have tons of people, osteosarcoma clients, you know, who are, are doing it the holistic route. If they live in a town where they are uh, have a dispensary and it's medically legal, that's where they go get the THC to give their dog. 
Now, okay. even with Nina, I would switch up the strains and use different strains knowing that their compound profiles would be different, that there would be different reactions, some she wouldn't like. Um, mm -hmm. And there were ones that I would write down, the ones I knew she, that she didn't respond well to. So I wouldn't give up. I would try different brands slash strains of hemp so that you can see maybe it's just that, that profile. So let's say it was a strain that made her high and she didn't like the high feeling. So we try a different strain and its, com its makeup may not feel that way. So I just think mm -hmm. you need to try different strains. Um, okay. Absolutely. That is so true. Um, yeah, my like rational brain was like, it has a strong smell. She doesn't like, she can tell as soon as I put it on my hand to put it on her paw, like she smells it. You know what right. I mean? So that was like my rational brain. Like, okay, she doesn't like the smell. And then the, you know, animal communicator, the muscle tester was like, she doesn't like the way she feels when she, you give it to her. Um, so I was like, okay, man, what am I going to do? What are you giving it to her for? Um, over grooming. We've, it's, it's so a anxiety, long story. Anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would try, I would just try different ones. Have you tried the calm one? Yes. She didn't like it? No. That's okay. <laughs> um, that's okay. We could try another one. Yeah. Um, that's what I would do. I would try another one or even try um, one of the other formulations to see if it calms her down. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to look on, look up others that might help instead. Um, but also... Let's say it's because she feels high. When I, so I had Nina for 26 months. She got TH to 10 milligrams. Of, well, first I started with eight, then moved it up to 10. 10 milligrams of THC every night definitely made her high. CBD dampens the effects of THC. So I would give that to her. I didn't at first, and she'd have urinary incontinence and pee the bed at night. And then I remembered that CBD dampens the effect, so I would give her CBD with the THC, and she didn't do it anymore. But there were ones that she, I literally made her too high, grumpy, um, didn't want to get up in the morning. I would pay really close attention and stop using those and then go, okay, these are the ones that she does really well on, where those, by the end, couldn't even tell that she was high. So let's say that if your cat is feeling high and doesn't like it, that it won't stay that way. So gotcha. if, you're, if you want to try it again and see if we can get past it where you test her at 30 days, meaning we know it's not bothering her, it's not making her sick, it's not, she just doesn't like that, the feeling. Let's, let's test it at 30 days because at 30 days, she may not even feel it anymore. She just right. may feel normal. So if you've got that deficiency in the endocannabinoid system, when you first feel it, you're going to feel something. So I've watched, like, and <laughs> I wish I had it on video. I had this 18-year-old miniature poodle that literally, um, I, they were boarding with me because he's so old and nobody will, whatever. And I'm like, hey, can I give him CBD? And I gave it to him. This little dog ran around my house like he felt so good like I, the only thing i can think of is that all of a sudden they don't have any pain and running around crazy i was like oh my god what if i'm done i'm like what if he doesn't go and then he slept for like 10 hours straight where i was like oh my god and then like felt great but the immediate flush of everything whether that was his high or just the pain was relieving or whatever mm -hmm. but it didn't happen every single time i gave it to him just that first time um, yeah. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the video of billy's uh dog lua his old pug lua um who recently passed last year same thing first dose she was high a very happy good high unlike your <laughs> but and it was just heal which has you know like no tea very little thc in it but it's not that way every single time. So I always like, you know, tell people that it's something, if it's a deficiency, we're going to build up that deficiency, come back to normal, and then everything will be normal. You won't, gotcha. won't be that way. All we got to get back but, to homeostasis. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I would try another brand or maybe try it and see what happens. Did it work? 
If she didn't like the feeling, did she stop the over grooming? <sighs> I don't or we didn't recall. Try it to- I don't. Yeah, I think I only tried it for maybe it was a little less than a week because um, she was just anytime I got it out, she freaked. But <laughs> I it wasn't a very long time. But I think one of the takeaways, and I really want people listening to 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 think about this, is anytime you try anything, journal. Because that's what is going to, you're going to be able to go back. And when you're living it, you don't notice as much. But if you write every little thing down, you're going to be able to go back and see changes and differences. And I think that it just clicked with me. Um, journal, 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 journal. <laughs> so absolutely. That's, that's, we tell everybody that we do online consultants all the time. We're like you have to journal what you're doing, especially because when we do a consult, we're usually second or third opinion. Pharmaceuticals yeah. have failed them. They don't have access to an integrated vet. So they, you know, give us all their records and tell us everything um, ahead of time. And I forgot what my point was. <laughs> <laughs> what was okay. my point? Don't remember. <laughs> oh, uh, let's say it's seizures. When did they start? Mm-hmm. What happened? What did you change? And some pet parents are incredible. They're like, I switched this food and he got a vaccination, you know, type of thing. And then we can go, all right, we're going to detox. We're going to, you know, whatever it is. But journaling and paying attention is a game changer. For me, it's, I, for instance, I just try a new product. I've got five dogs. All five of them get it and I see what happens. Well, guess what? Three of them had a reaction to it. I'm not going to use that product again. <laughs> And it, the product had two ingredients and it, some that I trust very much. So I'm like, I don't know what. So I'm going to go down a black hole of what this ingredient is, why three out of my five dogs had a reaction to it. Yeah. Different. Two had diarrhea and one has broken out in hives. So oh, wow. But I, you got to write, you got to write it down. I got to know, okay, that's what I put different in their food. Now mm-hmm. let me watch what happens or see what happens kind of thing. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about this event. It's on September 22nd. Yeah. It's, it's the Do No Harm event. That's right. I, I love that you call it the Do No Harm event because, you know, I, I talked to a lawyer friend of mine. It's been a while now because I'm just, when I, when I really first started getting into what our veterinarians are trained to do, what they're, you know, the protocols with our vets. And I talked to a lawyer friend and I said, how is this? They took an oath to do no harm. And he said, it's it's not about the oath. It's about the standard of care. And they have to, they have to meet the standard of care. That's the difference between conventional and integrative or or conventional and functional medicine is what we should be calling it. (laughs) Where convention is the diagnosis. Functional is about the patient. Meaning yeah. And, and there's even holistics who do that. Um, you know, even the holistic that did the amputation for me has a cancer protocol. She wanted to do it. And regardless of what I had done, what I know, what kind of cancer it was, all that. I was in a fight with a holistic vet. Wow. Oh, this is exhausting. <laughs> I said the same thing. I said, don't you guys take an oath? So guess what? The, the vets on this panel have take, taken the oath believe in the oath. And that's why we're calling it do no harm. Why are we giving dogs and cats, our pets, drugs that cause them harm when they don't have to? Now, does a ster, does an antibiotic and a steroid and a painkiller have a place? Absolutely. But all of those things need to be very temporary. It should not be used long term because they do have massive effects on their health and their immune system and their gut microbiome. So even if you have to go through those things, like Nina, I had to put her under anesthesia. I had to give her antibiotics. I had to give her painkillers during the surgery. But after that, she didn't get any of those things. What I did was detox from all those things. So help her liver um, regain its, you know, get back to normal, help her microbiome rebuild that up so that she could then return back to normal. So even if you have to use them, the problem is, is that they're just being used. You mm-hmm. go in for diarrhea and you're written three drugs and those drugs mm-hmm. don't work. And you have to come back and they take a blood test to make sure those drugs that they gave your dog aren't killing your dog. 
and then they don't work, so they give me another one, and that causes another side effect. And now these, how do I have a rescue where I have no pharmaceuticals here? I don't have a single, and all I have are dogs with cancer, IBDD, CCD, can't walk, you know, having, you name it, seizures, and I don't have a single pharmaceutical drug um, in, my, in my farm, my house, my, my uh, shop, none. Everything is done holistically. Not to say that I not, might not need something like that one day. But they're being abused and they're killing our pets. And if that is your oath to do no harm, then why are you doing that? Because conventional is ignoring the do no harm and doing the standard of care or practice or whatever the heck that bullshit term you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is ridiculous. It's almost like when everybody in the beginning was like, well, what's dosing? Tell us the dosing. How do you dose a dog? And I'm like, well, I can't tell you one to 10 pounds, give them this, because that's not how it works. Every dog is different. My nine mm -hmm. pound schnauzer needed two full dropper fulls of calm to calm down during a thunderstorm when my 60 pound Doberman needed a quarter of a dropper. And so it doesn't make sense. Every dog's endocannabinoid system and their deficiencies are different, their age, their environment, everything makes a difference. So treating the patient and not would it believe the diagnosis, not the prognosis? You know, treat that patient and not the um, not the disease. I think is the biggest difference between functional medicine, which under that is integrative and holistic veterinarians, versus conventional. Yeah, but conventional I, I, has a lot more money, so that's what's being plastered in our face. That's also what you're going to find. You literally, when you go research something, it's ashwagandha safe for dogs. You got to get through the bullshit that paid itself to be up there at the top to get to the real ones to find the yeah. answers. And it's funny because, of course, I'm doing that. And some of them will be like, um, ashwagandha is great for this, this, and this, but none of this has been proven, so don't really use it for anything. You know, that's the disclaimer underneath it. We can't make any of these claims because we're not. I'm not allowed to say that um, a full-spectrum hemp extract will uh, do anything with cancer. Not allowed to say anything. Right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It, yeah. It so is, right? <laughs> There's I, such I used to put it on my labels and I finally took it off because I got so much. If you guys could see what I go through being in this industry, this is the craziest. You know, the pet industry is crazy, but the cannabis yeah. industry. And then watching the players in the pet industry try to jump on this bandwagon and make up the rules and regulations and what should be. And you're like, where did you come from? Yeah. <laughs> There's already somebody called the hemp industry who tells us what to do, and that's what I follow. That's why I'm one of the few people who has a QR code on all my labels and batch numbers engraved on the bottom of my bottles. I treat it as medicine and follow everything that the hemp industry recommends us to do, not what the pet industry that wants me to do or the NAC. Yeah. yeah. Or the and BMA or true. <laughs> Transparency is so important to, to me, and I think um, a lot of people are waking up to that as well, I, at least I hope, um, how important transparency is. But so the, the event, you have a panel of veterinarians who have been at this for decades. This isn't yeah. like somebody who just got out of vet school, which, you know what, they they deserve to be there too, but just, you know, for well, credibility. We're hoping, we we're hoping we can <laughs> so that they can learn more. Yeah. And, and they're talking about, I mean, I just, the lineup is amazing. Dr. Josie and Ava Frick and, and Ruth Roberts and so, so many more. Um, and they're, so they're talking about opioids. They're talking about antibiotics, prescrip prescription, prescription, uh, foods, right? Right. <laughs> I hate that so much. Just and, why? um, yeah, it's just, there, there's so much there. Like you said, hoping veterinarians attend and, because I, I recently did a, vi a reel, um, people like myself and, and Rachel Fusaro and others, and I, you, and I, I mean, I think you're, we're just at, you'll probably get so much more than I do. But it's really disheartening when the conventional veterinary professionals, veterinarians and others in, you know, veterinary professionals are just aggressive 
on social media about, you know, everything you're saying is BS and you're, you're hurting pets. You know what I mean? Like that, that's the bottom line of what they're saying. You don't have any proof and you're hurting pets. You're <laughs> not. So my tough. favorite is that I'm not a veterinarian. And I'm like, I know I'm not a veterinarian. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I would be a veterinarian, um, but I get it. And there's so many that are so good, but there's so many bad players. It's just like anything else. You're going to have someone who goes into it to help the animals and you're going to go have the other one who's into it to make money. Or, you know, the new thing I'm finding is veterinarians who just want to be famous and a star or so they're not even practicing, <laughs> you know, they're mm -hmm. just, they just want to be a star and know something. So I think it's, you know, I'm not a veterinarian, but I don't know anybody else who's been practicing medical cannabis on pets longer or more than I have. Um, and I've had nothing but success. I have killed nobody. I have extended lives. I've uh, put cancer in remission four times now. Um, you know, my new monster is CCD, canine cognitive um, disorder, dementia for dogs, because I got them to 16, got rid of their cancer, and then lost them to dementia. So um, I just, what happened was that I, just like you, I was another person who could not believe the stories I was hearing. I couldn't believe we would get vet records for these consultations and literally the list of drugs. And we'd be like, you know, I turned to Dr. Zach or Dr. Urban who were on the consults with me. And we'd be like, why are they giving you that antibiotic? They don't know. There's Just in no case. bacterial infection. There's why, <laughs> why? It's like bacteria, painkiller and steroid gets written for everything, whether they need it or not. And it makes no sense. And you gotta go, why are they doing that? They're doing that because they don't know what else to do. They were, your dog gets hit by a car, I can put back together. I need to open you up and take something out, got that. But diet, nutrition, why it's having diarrhea, why it's throwing up, cancer, all I have to stop with cancer, cut it out. Put them under and cut it out, and that doesn't work. How much longer are you gonna keep on doing that till you go, this is not working? So there's those veterinarians. So I just turned off the veterinarians that I worked with and I said, I'm seeing a terrible trend. It makes no sense to me. This is exactly what happened to my dog 20 years ago and it's getting worse. Am I crazy? Can I, should right. I do an event? So I said that to yeah. Josie first, who then, you know, we're like, okay, we gotta do a podcast. So then we did a podcast talking about it. Then I wrote, Everyone on, the, there's not a doctor that I wrote. These are the doctors I asked to do, and they all said yes. Matter of fact, I got more when I found, when they found out we were doing it, that signed up, so then I had to find a home for them. They all were like, yes, please. Some of these doctors who've been practicing for 20 years have not written a prescription for 20 years. Wow. So what That's does that incredible. tell you? What they're doing is working. They just don't have the money and resources to go all over the internet and tell you about it because they're busy practicing medicine. They're mm -hmm. busy using acupuncture, chiropractic, Chinese herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, cannabis, medicinal mushrooms, ozone, and, uh, and never need a steroid, an antibiotic, or a painkiller. So I'm trying to get back to the way it should be. <laughs> because it's out of control. And there is definitely a trend where drugs that were never used in the vet industry are suddenly making an appearance and being used by everyone and they don't work. They literally don't work. So we're yeah, to, and to show you guys that, show other vets that, let them know that there is something else. And you know, hearing Dr. Christman saying that they're teaching about the endocannabinoid system in some vet schools now, I feel like I've actually accomplished something in these past six years because <laughs> I get invited to schools all the time to speak. But do you know who invites me? The students. Student, yeah. And I come on their lunch hour and I go into a lecture hall and they come during their lunch and I teach them about cannabis medicine. A teacher, That's professor, the school. That's me. I know. Yeah. So we do a lot of that. That's why him telling me that was probably the best news ever because... I said the thing, I go, well, you know, vets aren't taught about the endocannabinoid system. He goes, they are now. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs>
that's that's it is. So this event, you have you have options for everyone. Um, There are free tickets to watch live, and then there are paid tickets where you get the recordings. Is that correct? You get recordings, uh, downloadable guides, meaning we're literally going to have a guide on how to use all of, you know, both adaptogenic herbs, Ayurvedic herbs, Chinese medicine, cannabis, and mushrooms. So basically, you dog suffering from this, this is the mushroom that'll work. This is the dose of ashwagandha that'll work, that type of thing. So very, like I noticed in a lot of, um, and there's some really great events out there. I love, I go to as many attend as many as I can, but a lot of them, I, I really wanted to narrow it down to the pet parents so that they knew exactly which ones, what works for pets, how to dose it, what to work, what works, and which ones to combine. Or if you've got a dog that has multiple problems, because everything's always separated out. You know, if it's got arthritis mm-hmm. and cancer, then you take this for arthritis and this for cancer. And that, and you don't have to do that because m- many times, many of those will cross over and do well with all of them. So wow. let's say you've got um, your cat. I would try ashwagandha. I would try, there's, you know, not only cannabis or hemp is not the only thing out there that helps calm animals. Or mm-hmm. adding ashwagandha with the tincture. Or mm-hmm. maybe it's the, the lavender and cannabis combination she doesn't like. So, you know, they're, they're, they're all natural. So they all have different strains and species and it's fun to be able, knowing that none of them are going to cause them harm, being able to figure out what works for your pet individually. I, and that, that's a really key thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind as a pet parent, especially that you can try these things and they're not going to hurt. Like you're not harming your pet when you try something natural like this. Just Um, make sure it is a truly natural product. Yeah. So just like you have to get, you check our certificate of analysis to make sure what we say is in that bottle and that what's not in that bottle, that same thing goes for every um, essential oil, every Mm -hmm. coconut oil, all of them. So you want to make sure you still do your research before you give them that, but make sure that you're getting a truly uh, pure product. And I love that you said... Um, I forgot how you said it, but who is behind the brand? Who are, who is making this supplement? And the reason mm-hmm. I say that is because I used to go, okay, here's what you look for when you're buying a CBD product. Make sure it's a full spectrum product. Make sure it has a COA. Make sure it's, you know, grown and manufactured the correct way. And then I added one was who makes it? What is the story behind it? Because mm-hmm. if you can't find a person behind it, then it's just a company making money. Who's making yeah. money off of it, which there's nothing wrong with that either. But with things like this, especially the natural stuff, it's what's the reason? Who's the person behind it? Who's the vet? Who's the team? We have a whole board of advisors of veterinarians who've been using our products for years now. So there's no, nobody can say to me that THC is going to kill my dog or that CBD is bad and it doesn't work. I'll show you a whole bunch of vets who say otherwise. And and pet parents forget about it. We have more reviews, lumps, bumps going away, dogs getting up and walking again, seizures stopping. It's beautiful. I love my job. I love, I don't even have to, people just send me the good ones. I don't even have to see the bad, if there are bad reviews. I don't even get to see those. I just see the good ones Um, because it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to give them one little natural thing under their tongue and the itching stopping or the rash goes away or the love starts shrinking. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. It, and it, yes, to just kind of add on to what you're saying about knowing who makes the product and, and trusting in the mission and, and a lot of times the person behind that brand and that product is so important. One of the one of the most difficult things outside of you're not a veterinarian and you don't know what you're talking about and, and where's the study is it's so expensive. With, with any and everything that I talk about, it, but it's so expensive. You're going to pay now or you're going to pay later. Hey, you, wanna put, sister. <laughs> you, you want to put the most quality into your animal 
as you possibly can afford to. Otherwise, you, are, you your pet is going to pay later. I would love to really? say that I, I want to clarify that when I'm talking about when I put cat a, a cancer remission and seizure stop, I'm feeding these dogs a biologically appropriate raw fresh diet. So it's not like these dogs are being fed kibble and I'm doing all these things. I'm doing everything right. So I want to make sure everybody understands that the immune system lives in that gut and you've got to be feeding them the right thing. And what you feed them will change over the years. As all my dogs <laughs> become seniors and it's a geriatrics, I've had to switch how they, you know, I'm now to gently cook on all of them because all I have are seniors now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So even you have to still keep on, but it really does make a difference. You've got to feed them the right thing. So it starts with that diet and then staying as natural as you possibly can with the supplements, realizing that, you know, these medicines and practices that have exist for 5,000, over 5,000 years and have been proven effective, they really work. <laughs> they still work. Yeah. They work better than a lot of conventional meds and so I just want to remind everybody, A, you have a choice. Because when I went for Nina, I was given one choice. Actually, it's given mm -hmm. two cho choices. Put her down now so she you doesn't can, suffer, yeah. which, you know, that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. I had more dogs that were supposed to be put down that I bring back to life because it just, and I get it, it does seem overwhelming when your dog seems like it's not getting up and it's not moving, but guess what? It's probably from the meds it's on, <laughs> you know? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I am. Um, we're just going to keep on telling as many people as we possibly can. And I love that you're talking about this event and that you care and that you're sharing it with so many people, because I just want everybody to know you have a choice. And if you still want to go to that convention route, awesome. You want to do both. Awesome. You know, both convention and CBD. CBD. There's already research showing how cannabis helps uh, patients going through chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. There's literally a pharmaceutical drug that took THC. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's a synthesized THC or an isolate of THC. I think it's called Marimen. I don't remember now. But they give it. They prescribe it with um, with chemotherapy. Kind of like how in Japan they prescribe compounds from turkey tail mushroom with chemotherapy and for cancer. So those things have always existed and have been proven to work. We're just getting away from them because what we're being marketed and exactly is I, to I, convention and pharmaceuticals and the doctor knows best. Yes. And I'm so glad you said the marketing because this really, I mean, it's only been since the 50s, 60s, like, we did a lot of natural stuff uh, less than a century ago, right? Like this is, it's, we're, we're if within you go, If you 100... look at the prohibition of cannabis, it's because of big pharma. It's because of someone wanting yes. to say, no, we can't, we can't have this. Yeah. And I mean, they're attacking. thing that grows like a weed in the field. Mm -hmm. we that. We, we've got to, we've got to sell They're something. really attacking homeopathy now too. And it's like, I think the deprogramming, is harder than programming, right? So right. we're going through some deep programming right now. And unlearning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, unlearning what has been marketed to us for the past 60-ish years, plus, you know, 60 plus years. And so a, a lot of us were born into that, like me and you, we were born into this. So we have to, like you said, we have to unlearn it well, what's to the, learn something new. Yeah, there's a piece of research that said after World War II, there were over 80,000 new chemicals introduced into our personal care products, into our food, everything. So um, our thought that the FDA is protecting us, the FDA couldn't protect us even if they wanted to. You know, if a chemical, if, some, if a product supplement, first of all, FDA doesn't oversee what happens in, in the pet world. Um, they... Uh, so we they outsource it. <laughs> Nobody does. It's up to us. It's up to us to, to educate yeah. ourselves and look at everything that's been given to us to give to put in us or put in our family or in our dogs, our pets, mm -hmm. because it's um, we can't trust anybody anymore. And it's <laughs> hard to find that answer. Um, 
but I forgot what my point was. I just, I just want people to know that they have a choice and to look at it and not to, yes. not to just immediately. I can't tell you how many times I've been sent home with a bag of pills. And I'm like, I didn't ask for these. How did I get these? Or how many times I have to go in and go, I don't go in anymore. I don't go into a vet anymore. I have friends now at Holistic yeah. Vet. So literally dog has an issue and I text all five of them and then I combine what they say. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it's always, it's literally always like the same thing and all mine are holistic. So it's always a natural, it's, you know, a Chinese herb, an Ayurvedic herb, you know, whatever it is that they're going to suggest or, you know, did you do this or did you do that? But yeah, I can't. Um, and I, that's the other thing that I've, everybody needs to know is that if you don't have a holistic or an integrated vet and you want one, you can get them on the phone now. You can do a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. You can go, this is what I do. I go get a blood test, an x-ray at a vet's office, and then I send it to my trusted um, vets and say, Dr. Sarah, what do I do? Dr. Josie, what do I do? What do you think? Um, and, um, and go from there. And it's awesome, too, because I love to compare what the uh, conventional vet says compared to what, when they look at it like mm -hmm. liver values, um, uh, what it, the holistic wanted me to do. The big alarm was that she was super low in vitamin D and something else. And so I send that in, in like emergency. We have to give her vitamin D now. I'm going to give it to her uh, vitamin therapy. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. I have Sarah look at it. Sarah goes, the reason she's low in vitamin D is because the cancer is taking it. Once the can't once you amputate that leg, it's not going to be taking it anymore. So yes, we need to supplement her more because the cancer is taking it all. But now I know why, and it was explained to me instead of mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this test says this. You fear. You know There's a lot of fear. It's in looking, conventional medicine. Yeah, it's just looking at the diagnosis and not the patient. Mm -hmm. And that to me was what the, the biggest eye opener was, is realizing cancer. Okay. We do this. No, everybody's a little different and we still do. Here's, I have a protocol. Here's Nina's protocol. If you've got a dog with osteosarcoma. This is what I did with Nina and it worked. You could do a version of this, but things could be different. It could be in a different place. She could be younger. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think every dog being treated and every patient being treated as an individual is probably the most important thing and that you're being listened to. That doctor doesn't know your pet better than you do. Right. No matter yeah. what's wrong, even if we know it has cancer, they still know your pet best. Trust your gut. I knew with my first thing, I was blindly, didn't even, it completely ignored my gut and just was like, okay, they know best. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be the best patient ever. I'm going to go in and show them everything. And I actually had an autopsy done on her. Um, and the only thing I could find was uh, IBD, irritable bowel. So I still don't know. So what I know now is that I killed my dog by doing yeah. all of those things. I didn't give her yeah. immune system a chance to ever recover from all those meds and all those treatments and all that money. And I know she was miserable that whole time and I will never do that again. And I'm hoping that my experience will keep others from going through that. That's so powerful. And events like this are so empowering for the pet parent. Um, and that's really why I, I'm going to keep talking about this and I'm in other events because it's, you, when you know better, you can do better. And the, it's just so empowering to have all of this extra knowledge and to be comfortable and confident walking into your veterinarian's office saying, I just want the blood work and or the x-ray and saying, thank you for your help and your service and taking that to someone else you trust for something else. <laughs> I'll go in and go, Hey, my primary is in another state. So I need to come and just have this. She just wants me to do this, this, and this. So even whether, whether or not, um, I'm constantly like, Oh no, my vet, I have a vet. I have a primary vet. And she says, she told me to do this, even though she didn't tell me to do that. I know that I will get as much flack by saying, yeah, I try to know about this kind of thing. 
So yeah, it's, it's um, whatever. You, I don't. Everything we have to. There's nothing that we should hand over that's so important to anybody else without making sure. I know that, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm hoping everybody knows that. That goes for everything. You got to be yes. involved. You got to put your hundred percent in. You got a sick dog. You got to put hundred percent in. You, not them. <laughs> you. Yes. So you know, I've got one vet who does chiropractic. I've got one that does acupuncture. You know, I have I have them all, and they're all they're all beautiful and um, know so much, and none of them ever suggest a pharmaceutical drug. I love I love that you've built a team to support you in supporting your animals. That's beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, okay. The event, first of all, okay. The downloads, I must have missed that because I, that is worth way more than what you're charging, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> I know, so, it's so much time. <laughs> I can't stop. I just, I like will get get through creating it and then I'll go back and put my pet pair hat on and I'm like, well, no, that doesn't make any sense. You know, so I go back and make it more easy. Remember what it was like when I was first learning about all of this and not to be overwhelmed. But I think that the, the best part about it is that you don't have to worry about hurting them because you're not giving them anything that's going to be harmful. There are Chinese herbs. That is not my forte. I believe in them and love them. And if, one of the, my vets say, yes, give him this. Like, for instance, I'm giving Odie is a spleen deficiency, so I'm giving him, I don't know what it's called. You know, she, she starts with an X. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I totally believe in them. Sorry, I thought I saw, like, a fox running across my yard and all my animals are out. So I was like, oh, my gosh, and then your dog barked. I'm like, is that from my house? <laughs> I know. Well, the Amazon truck just pulled up. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. That's it. That's what happens in my house. So. I love the painting. Oh, my God. So cute. I love dogs that have hair like that. So. It feels like, it feels like human hair. Oh, I love it. I love your painting behind you also. That's beautiful. I've been looking for a cat one to match it. Um, I just haven't found haven't found it yet. But um, so, Okay. Everyone can go and register yournaturaldog.com slash events, correct? Yep. Okay. And please do go ahead and register today. Like right now, pause what you're doing. Go to it's yournaturaldog.com. Free. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> there is an option for everyone. I am definitely paying because I want the downloads. But- oh, cool. <laughs> well, good. I'll send you. I'm, then if you are, I'm going to send you one of the goodie box, one of the... VIP VIP goodie boxes because I'll have you unbox it. So email me your address so that I can send it to you. I absolutely will because I mean I can already like think of a million different uses for a, a download like you described, especially as I have a, to me I have a vitally healthy dog. I am very lucky right now. My prior dogs were not vitally healthy. And I say that's, I, I feel like there's a difference in a healthy dog and a vitally healthy oh, dog. Yeah. And um, so she's, I, I, since the day we adopted her has been raw fed and awesome. no, no vaccines and all that. I mean, she was already two and a half. So she had right. some not so great stuff prior, but um, it, it, one thing I got really lucky on was that they, she wasn't spayed until right before we adopted her. So I did get lucky there, but, um, there, uh, to me, there's a difference in a, in a healthy animal and a vitally healthy animal. And I I know what it's like to have an animal that isn't vitally healthy. And, um, so I can think of a million different things for uh, a download like you described, but, um, yournaturaldog.com slash events. And, uh, of course, you can find Angie, an- sorry, Angela, <laughs> uh, everywhere. Um, you have CBD Dog Health. You have your natural dog. You have your farm. Um, uh, forgive me. It's, it's Fire Lake Farm. Fire, <laughs> yes. And um, I, I think you have a couple other things, don't you? <laughs> I do. I just, well, that's what's crazy. And I never thought I'd be in this position. But um, when, because of Nina, 
I really got into the mushroom, medicinal mushrooms. Actually, my dogs from CCD got me into mushrooms because of the lion's mane and the trying to whatever. And then Nina happened and I really got into them and found my favorites that had the most anti-cancer, anti-tumor, bone uh, healing, uh, healthy immune system. And I, the problem is, is I would get them as dried extract powders and put them in her food and it would create the mud. So I was like, okay, there's got to be a tincture. And so then, of course, I went searching and could not find anything. So I'm like, oh, my God, am I going to have to make a mushroom tincture? So I started the education. Then it took me two years. Found um, a person, which that took the longest. Found a person. This is kind of what happened in the hemp world, too, is I found a person that was doing it right and the human side of things. And then I taught them how to make a product for pets. So together with him, we created um, tinctures, putting them in organic glycerin instead of alcohol, um, making them so that, you know, the doses are what dogs, you know, benefit from the most. Uh, so, yes, I have a mushroom company also now called Myco Dog. Um, we just released the three tinctures. Um, they actually, I've had them for a while. I just didn't have time to release them or create the labels, but I literally created them. Yeah, so that's why there's like not even a website <laughs> for them or anything because I created them. But so many people were asking me about them that I finally got the labels done and put the three formulations out there. So I have those and they're going great. And there's really not anything else like them in the market. And I'm already getting so many unbelievable responses from pet parents who are trying them and seeing unbelievable response. Uh, from them. So I'm a big fan. Mushrooms are just like cannabis where they're an adaptogen and when they get into your body, they do what they need to do. Um, and they're totally natural and non-toxic. Of course, there are toxic mushrooms, but the medicinal ones that I'm talking about aren't. And, you know, the, the putting several adaptogens together, how people don't understand the power of that. You know, like where you could take a dose of CBD, a full spectrum hemp extract, and add an adaptogen or two, or two, and you've just made it 10 times more powerful um, without, you know, making them higher or doing anything else. It's just more powerful because those other adaptogens interact with the endocannabinoid system. So it's just really a, a beautiful thing and, and discovering how, Cannabis isn't the only plant that's doing magic. It is the most magical one. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's up there. The others that compare are like an ashwagandha or an echinacea or a passion flower, uh, mistletoe, some of these other incredibly pl incredible plants that, I mean, if you believe in a god, I believe in Mother Nature. There's literally a plant that's here for us, or these plants that are here for us that heal us. Why are they here? Why are we? Why are they being kept from us? What's what is? Why is someone angry at me when I say, "Have you tried plant plant medicine instead?" I don't know if you see my T-shirts. It'll come in your goodie box. You'll get the T-shirt. Oh, see, it's the plants it, and what is, is it backwards? So one guy. Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> Because oh, it's goodness. true. I'm like, oh, yeah, I had to take your little, your little, just say no to drugs and throw it back uh, at you because it's true. You know, mm -hmm. we, can, we really can find it in nature. Yeah, I think um, plants are the best medicine. I mean, outside of, you know, it's, it, you can't out supplement good nutrition. Right. But I think you, you can't out, how do I, how, I don't even know. This is something new to me. This I'm going to make this up right now. You can't out medicate. I don't know plants. I have no idea. I need to figure that it's out. It's almost <laughs> like well, it does exist. Fake food does exist. Mm -hmm. So it's like eating um, I don't know cereal. You know uh, Cheerios instead of eating the actual oatmeal. You know we want to go to the oatmeal, not the Cheerios kind of thing, not the overprocessed commercialized, mm -hmm. covered in preservatives, you know, kind of thing. I don't, I don't know, but I, I understand what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the 
fact that our food is so depleted of nutrients now, that supplementation and the fact that mushrooms are so packed with so many nutri nutrients, it's at least we have them. Yeah. Oh. You can still grow those, right? I, I, I feel like I could talk to you for hours know, and hours and hours. <laughs> I just, I oh my gosh, you're well, the we'll best. we'll do it again. Well, and... have you on mine. Yes. So what I think would be great is I'll have you on my podcast and we'll have like a recap of what you learned, what were your takeaways and favorites and everything from the event. Ooh, ooh that would be so cool. Because I'm not yes. recording any in the month of September because I'm preparing for this damn event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be wonderful. So, Okay. I'm going to let you go. I have one quick question okay. because I like to end the episodes with something fun and more personal. What is your favorite book? My favorite book is a book called the mutant message down under. I cannot remember the author. Um, but, uh, yeah, I have to look that one up. It's, always been my favorite. I read it probably in my twenties and loved it. Um, but it's about a, a woman who goes and lives with, um, the Aborigines in Australia and what she learns. Um, so it's really cool. So it's called the mutant message down under. That's my favorite book. That sounds so interesting. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm, so I'm a book business wise. Um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad completely changed my, how I thought about money and mm -hmm. how I ran my business and did things. But that one was really great. For dog books, of course, I love the Forever Dog book. Um, this, this one is my favorite for the cannabis world, but it's not a fun read. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it looks mostly like that. <laughs> oh my yeah <laughs> the fact that it exists and that they put this together um you know and it, it's your is is your podcast video and audio yes okay cool so those of you who are watching get to see what book it was yes <laughs> there's a little easter egg to send you over to the the video um perfect well yeah i'm such a book nerd um i listened to probably four or five audibles a month so i'm i'm I just know, like I'm a, I'm a listener too I, that's not yeah. on there unfortunately i would love to but yeah i'm the same way i love listening to them that's yeah a, so i'm forever dog book was uh listening to it same same like i would listen to like an hour and then i would get the the hardback and like make notes yeah. and highlight and, and uh, like what i had so just listened to experiences was reading that and then not getting the how to choose a product, where to get the product, how to make sure that they're good ones. So that's kind of also in my guides, what I'm hoping to do is to be able to go, okay, Karen told you these were great. Dr. Becker said these were great. Now we're going to tell you which ones are you should choose or why they're great and how you can use them for different ailments and disease that we see in our pets. Oh, yes. Yes. That is so important. I mean, my goodness, if you're on social media at all, then you know how confused confused pet parents are right <laughs> well, you know we have a facebook group and just look looking at advice that gets what did someone write the other day they're like they were from new zealand or something and they're like yeah you shouldn't put uh full spectrum hemp extract in an oil of any kind and i'm like what are you talking about honey i can show you proof that the the best absorption is with another oil because that's already been researched because everybody's trying to prove one person or the other person wrong so it's you're just like and it's probably because it's from another country so they're 10 10 years behind our cannabis industry or whatever it is so yeah it's amazing how people will just say things out and then you're like how do i not just sound like that person <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> saying something <laughs> I'm just right. waiting for you to ask me on my platform and then I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's, it's, it's a confusing world as a, as a pet parent. Um, it is, it's, it's so, con everything is so confusing. And I think, um, 
think that's because of all the marketing. I mean, truly, truly think that it is because of all the marketing um, from the pet food companies, from the pharmaceutical companies, from, I mean, they're, they're the you big ones. Ask yourself, why is M&M Mars own dog food companies? Why does mm-hmm. a candy company own a dog food company? Easy money. You could do Easy. anything. Nobody's. What, like I said before, there's no repercussions for killing thousands of pets. There is nothing mm-hmm. unless those thousand people get together and do something because they don't. Yes. That's why they're getting into it because it's so easy. And, you know, can't, can't you see him watching dope sit? Can't you see them sitting in the in the conference room going, all right, well, Gavin Pitt didn't work for this. What, what are we going to do with it? We can't. We got to do. We got to we got to make our money back. We got to whatever it is. Well, yeah. Why don't we make it a pet? I know. Truck? Like, watch Dope Sick on Saturday and watch Pet Fold on Sunday, and then on Monday go. <laughs> and then watch Fantastic Fungi on yeah. Tuesday, <laughs> and what's the CBD one? Uh, CBD Nation is a new one that came I out, seen that. and he's really good. I love him. Yeah. Yeah, he did a really good job. CBD Nation, I believe, is what it's called. So oh, I'm gonna have- and then watch all those, yeah. And then yeah. there's the truth about pet cancer, which I think you have to pay a whole bunch of money. But yeah, that it basically is going to say everything that I've already said. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I um, I gave the the. It, the one that Rodney did, right? The truth about, is that the one you're talking uh, about? I think he may have been involved in it. I can't remember now. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, Ty, yeah, yeah, he did. Ty Boll- Bollinger is the one he did. Yeah. He did one for humans and then did one for pets. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, I, I gave a copy of that to my then veterinarian, and I don't think she ever watched it. Probably not. <laughs> so sad. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much. You're welcome. It and was so much fun. So nice to meet you. I look forward you to getting too. to you know, know you better and partnering with you on some more things. I do too. Thank you so much. And, and keep don't up the forget that you too. Go to yournaturaldog.com slash events. It is live on September 22nd. So do it now. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach. Just go to the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.